Good day, seniors. Today we will tackle part three of cartoon studies. This tutorial video, I'm going to teach you the different techniques cartoon artists use to create humor. I will show you the examples of these techniques and we will analyze them together. Before you watch this tutorial video, you should check part one and part two in the series on cartoon studies, since the knowledge and analysis have a chronological order. Just to refresh your memory, cartoons together with advert Adverts are the two types of texts which fall under question 3 of paper 1 for the DBE. I know that over the years many of you have struggled with this question. It is not really that difficult or mysterious and I will guide you, step by step, until cartoons are no longer a question that you dread answering in the exam. In today's video we will do part 3 of cartoon studies. The next video in the series will deal with the different issues, such as the message and purpose of a cartoon. And finally, as last part in this series, I will provide you with cartoon questions from previous exam papers. Once you have completed these questions by yourself, I will also provide you with a memo and an explanation of the memo answers. Today, we will focus on the different techniques that create humour. Firstly, we should ask ourselves, what is humour? It's a tool used in literature that makes the audience laugh. It's often comments of social, political or linguistic shortfalls of people. It transforms the mundane to break the monotony of boredom and tedium, which helps the audience understand the text and engage with the message. These are the types of humoristic elements that will be discussed. Irony, ambiguity, misunderstanding, anticlimax and satire. What is a pun? A pun is a referred to as a play on words because the cartoon uses homonyms and homophones to make a joke. In case you've forgotten, homonyms are words that sound the same and have the same spelling, but have two different meanings. For example, the two meanings of rock, as used in the cartoon. Rock can be a large stone or it can actually mean something's really cool. Similarly, the word rule can be interpreted in two ways. A ruler is used to rule off a section of work on a paper and therefore a verb. But here, the other meaning is again to be cool. Homophones are words that sound the same but have different spelling and meanings. For example, I ate the cake versus the number eight that comes after seven. As I've already explained, in this cartoon, the artist has used homonyms to create his little joke. A rock and a ruler congratulate each other on how great or cool they are. The double meaning of rock and rule create the humour. Puns are usually a little bit lame and they're often referred to as dad jokes. But whether you are not laughing, it doesn't really matter in your exam. You have to be able to recognise a cartoon as a pun, explain its connotations and the denotations of each word by identifying how the words have a double meaning and what those are. Let's see if you can do it on your own. Now it's your turn. Apply your knowledge and answer the questions in your notebook. Firstly, give a definition for the term pun. Which word creates the pun? Explain the two meanings, the connotation and the denotation of the word. Apply it to the cartoon and then explain how the cartoonist has used this technique to create humour. Ambiguity is when there might be two or more ways a word or phrase could be interpreted. This can confuse the reader and make the meaning of the sentence unclear. The captions and the dialogues that follow the images are ambiguous. Thus, it expresses different understandings that people might have of the so-called actual meaning. In other words, one character has a different interpretation of the words in the speech bubble than the other. That's why ambiguity is sometimes also referred to as misunderstanding. In this cartoon on the slide, we see an angry wife telling her husband not to go into the bar and drink in one frame. She uses the expression, you better think twice, which actually means don't do it. However, in frame two, we see that the husband has misunderstood her warning because he has taken the words literally. This is why his answer is funny. He has been looking forward to going to the tavern all day long. 
His wife's facial expression in the second frame makes it even funnier because you can tell from her turned down mouth that she is furious with her husband. She probably also thinks that he is stupid for misunderstanding her warning. On the other hand, maybe the husband misunderstands her warning on purpose and is playing dumb in the second frame, just so that he can get away from his wife and go drinking with his friends. Whichever interpretation makes more sense to you is up for you to decide. The important thing is to spot the ambiguity. In other words, the double meaning of the character's words and the other character's wrong interpretation of the words. It is different from puns because there are no similar sounding words that act as the punchline of the joke. Now it's your turn again. Look at the cartoon strip carefully. If there are words you don't understand, look up their definition. Then answer the following questions in your notebook. Number one, which word or idea causes the misunderstanding between the couple? Number two, what is the old man's interpretation of the fact that the painting doesn't have a title? Do not merely write what the character says in the speech bubble. You must write it in your own words to show the marker that you understand what he's saying. Number three, what is the old woman's reasons for the fact that her painting is untitled? Number four, how do you... How do the two interpretations differ from each other? Number five, why is it funny? Think about which of the two characters appear intelligent and which one appears vague and stupid. And number six, which technique did the cartoon use to create humor? If you could answer these questions, you will have no problem doing it in the exam. Anticlimax is a rhetorical device that can be defined as a disappointing situation or a sudden transition from an important idea to a ridiculous or unimportant one. It is when, at a specific point, expectations are raised, everything is built up, and then suddenly something boring or disappointing happens. This is an anticlimax. So, what are we looking for to spot an anticlimax? Look at the cartoon on the following slide. Do you recognize the cartoonist? We're back to Madame and Eve series, which we got to know so well in part one of the series on cartoon studies. The anticlimax in this cartoon is slightly different because the disappointing and ridiculous truth is revealed in frame two already. When we study frame one, we notice the threatening words coming from a person who is not in the frame. As South Africans, we know exactly what's happening. A criminal is threatening to shoot the two women if they don't give him money. However, in the second frame, our expectations of some climatic violence is overthrown. We see that the thief is actually a beggar and that pulling the trigger refers to shooting himself, not the woman. It is ridiculous because no beggar has ever done that. In this way, the cartoonist provided us with a fake context in frame one, which causes suspense and an expectation that will be a climax of some sort. Then it all falls flat in frame two. The anticlimax becomes even more ridiculous in frames three and four because the beggar thinks that the woman, or thanks the woman for giving him money and even says, have a nice day, as though nothing out of the ordinary has happened. We can't help but laugh at how absurd the whole situation is. The last frame wraps up the joke when the old lady, or Mother Anderson, comes to the conclusion that at least the beggar was creative and thought outside the box. Her comment is also not what we would expect, because she would be traumatized instead of impressed. Now that we've analyzed the cartoon, look at it again and see if you can pinpoint the build-up and the reason for suspense. Then explain how the anticlimax is created. Can you explain the humor in this cartoon and how it has been created by the cartoonist? It's your turn to analyze. Let me read the speech bubbles to you since it's a little bit blurred in the cartoon. In frame one, Tandy asks Mother Anderson, I still don't get it. What's apartheid? Mother Anderson replies, OK, you know the song Ebony and Ivory? In frame two, Tundi answers, yes. And Mother Anderson says, 
well with apartheid with all the white keys were on one side and all the black keys were on the other side and the white keys were in charge got it the following frame or frame three creates suspense because tundi is quiet and seems to be thinking very hard my expectations are raised and i am in suspense as to how this conversation will end then in frame three tundi looks at the audience and says it must have been really hard to play the piano satire is a very important rhetorical device you will encounter satire not only in cartoons but also in comprehensions as well as in poetry plays and novels so let's not waste any time i'll give you a simple mathematical sum to simplify the concept irony plus humor equals ridiculing someone or something that equals satire. Even though satire is always funny, the cartoonist's intention is serious. He or she wants to bring about change by pointing out the flaws. If you've watched part one of this series, you'll recognize this cartoon. Let's figure out what the irony is. In the first frame, the character on the right is Eve, a domestic worker. On the right hand side is Madam, her employer. Read frames one and two. What is ironic about the situation? Eve is changing her employer money to cross her own kitchen floor. This is a role reversal. It should be the employer who is in charge, but here we have the opposite. Eve is calling the shots. So now we have our first component, situational irony. This already creates humor. However, it is the pun in the final frame that delivers the punchline. The term Eve toll is a play on words with what the term or the term that we use in South Africa that we live in Gauteng, the e tolls, of course. We have to pay e tolls to use our own roads, just as Madam has to pay Eve tolls to cross her own kitchen floor. I know what you're thinking. How are you supposed to know that in the exam and know what the characters' names are? Not to worry. If it's important in the understanding of the cartoon, the examiner will provide you with that information alongside the cartoon. Now, on to the next question. What flaw or problem is being mocked or ridiculed? Well, we've just covered the question. It is the e-toll fees that we are forced to pay to use our own roles. The cartoonist is saying that paying e-tolls is just as stupid or ridiculous as Madden having to pay her domestic worker to cross her own kitchen floor. You could argue that it is Sanrail's job to maintain the roads. We are already paying tax to cover the cost of road maintenance. Just like Madam is already paying Eve a salary to clean the kitchen floor because it's her job. Those of you who could figure out the joke are probably laughing. But remember, with satire, the cartoonist is also addressing a serious issue. He is saying that e tolls are unnecessary and unfair and that it should be taken away the japanese write not in letters but in symbols and their two symbols for satire are laughter and knives in other words their word for satire is laughter with knives i think that's the crudest definition of satire that i've ever heard are you ready to do one on your own let's try it out it's your turn to analyze let me read the speech bubbles to you since it's a little bit blurred. In frame one, Tandy says, I'm so sick. In frame two, all three women shout a question to her. What are your symptoms? Have you got a temperature? And lastly, can you taste food? In frame three, Shandy shouts back, yes, like, I was just trying to say I'm sick and tired about COVID-19 24-7. In the final frame, the door slams shut and Tandy says, Obviously, I need to work on my timing. Now, answer the questions in your notebook. That concludes part three on cartoon studies. Next time, we will cover part four, the final installment in the series. In this video, I will teach you the following concepts. The cartoonist's point of view, the message of the cartoon, and the purpose of a cartoon. Don't miss out on part four because you will be asked another question on these concepts in your exam. Also, be on the lookout for the do-it-yourself booklet on cartoons where you can work through past exam questions on cartoons. 
I will also provide you with the memo and guide you through the correct ways to answer the questions. In this way, we will cement your skills and then you can answer questions on cartoons in your sleep.